Good morning. I'm still reporting on the coup. What if it turns out that General Mark Milley, the current chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was actually the commanding officer of the deeply covert agent provocateur group which incited and spearheaded the violence of the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol building? Sounds impossible? Well, maybe not. According to author Julie Kelly of American Greatness, an online magazine that started six years ago, after Attorney General William Barr resigned from the Justice Department, Jeffrey Rosen became the acting Attorney General on Christmas Eve of 2020. With the Electoral College vote coming down only two weeks later on January 6, 2021, Rosen began assembling a covert operations team to, apparently, infiltrate the rallies and protests that were scheduled that day in the mall area of Washington, D.C. How was it that Jeffrey Rosen came up with such a bold, seditious plan in so few days? It seems reasonable to assume that he had help from some organization with deep expertise in covert action. That pretty much narrows it down to either the CIA or the military version of it, the Defense Intelligence Agency. That's the same outfit that General Michael Flynn headed up after being appointed by President Obama in 2012. After two years at DIA, Flynn retired from the military after 31 years of meritorious service. I am positive that none of what you are about to hear could possibly have happened with General Flynn at the helm of DIA. For the entire month of July, Cerule is offering only to my listeners an unbelievable BOGO offer on not only Stem Enhance Ultra, but its two companion products, Cyactive and Plasma Flow. BOGO, of course, means buy one, get one free. These three products work synergistically to reverse the signs of aging. Stem Enhance Ultra, or SEU, is the only product on the market that is clinically proven to increase your own blood levels of adult stem cells. Adult stem cells are the key to what makes your natural immunity function properly. It's quite literally your body's first responders when cells are damaged or aging. Cyactive knocks out roadblocks for adult stem cells to get to their target areas in need of repair by reducing inflammation in the blood vessels. Plasma flow, as its name implies, helps reduce the friction in the blood flow by breaking down the fibrin mesh, one of the possible causes of certain long COVID problems. And as always, Cerule offers their bulletproof 30-day money-back guarantee. Here is a list of scientific studies supporting the efficacy of Cerule's Big 3 product lineup. You can get clickable links in the description box below. So, starting now, you can buy up to three bottles of SEU, Cyactive, and or Plasma Flow at the regular price and get three more bottles free. Your choice. Go to https colon slash slash icerule.biz slash the still report for details on this BOGO offer. Author Julie Kelly credits the following to Newsweek reporter William M. Arkin, who disclosed the following in a bombshell report earlier this year. There was no formal request from the U.S. Capitol Police, the Secret Service, or the Metropolitan Police Department in fact, no external request for help from any agency. The leadership in justice and the FBI anticipated the worst and decided to act independently with special operations forces lurking behind the scenes. Again, according to Arkin, these special operators included commandos with shoot-to-kill authority, and among them were members of the military. I have worked at OSD, the Office of the Secretary of Defense, as well as in conjunction with the Special Operations Forces, F SOF. I find it hard to believe that you could scrape together more than a handful of SOF operators treasonous enough to conduct the January 6th operation the way it went down. 
but the FBI has its own special operations unit and CIA certainly has folks who could be described as commandos to use William Arkin's terminology. To continue with Julie Kelly quoting William Arkin, the presence of these extraordinary forces under the control of the Attorney General and mostly operating under contingency plans that Congress and the U.S. Capitol Police were not privy to added an additional layer of highly armed responders. The role that the military played in this highly classified operation is still unknown, though FBI sources tell Newsweek that military operators seconded to the FBI and those on alert as part of the National Mission Force were present in the metropolitan area. National Mission Force? That's a new one on me. Rosen gave scant testimony about this secret mission before the House Oversight Committee in May of 2021. According to Julie Kelly, writing in American Greatness, little else is known about Rosen's secret mission. His testimony to the House Oversight Committee in May of 2021 was just as obscure. Rosen, who publicly bragged to the January 6th Select Committee about his attempts to deter Team Trump from pursuing vote fraud, days before the Capitol protest, said the FBI opened a multi-agency operations center, which included the Department of Defense, at FBI headquarters on January 5th. Quoting Rosen again, each of these federal agencies supplied personnel to staff the center, 24-7 beginning on January 5th and 6th and continuing for a period thereafter. The reason I'm so careful with my quotes here is that if this is true, then Rosen, who as a civilian would not have had it drilled into him that having someone who was active military involved in a domestic law enforcement or intelligence operation, including domestic surveillance collection against American civilians, is strictly forbidden under the military's code of conduct and federal law. Whoever, except in cases and under circumstances expressly authorized by the Constitution or Act of Congress, willfully uses any part of the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, or the Space Force as a posse comitatus or otherwise to execute the laws, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than two years or both. Certain exclusions, such as the President's invocation of the Insurrection Act and any use of the National Guard, apply. This brings us up to the current day actions of Representative Adam Schiff, Democrat from Burbank and parts of Hollywood, California. According to Julie Kelly's reporting, Schiff tucked an amendment into the massive National Defense Authorization Act that would prohibit any evidence collected in violation of the Posse Comitatus Act from being used in a number of proceedings, including criminal trials and congressional investigations. Last Thursday, the House of Representatives narrowly passed Schiff's amendment by a 215 to 213 vote. Every Republican and two Democrats voted no. Why would Schiff feel the need to outlaw evidence of illegal activity, even treasonous activity, collected unlawfully on top of it? Could it be that high-ranking active military are involved in what was certainly molded by the actions of trained agent provocateurs, people trying to incite a crowd to violence? Could it be that a top general, General Mark Milley, headed up this group operationally on that day? And could it be that General Milley and possibly others involved demanded this extra layer of protection from Schiff? As Julie Kelly put it, it is not a coincidence that Schiff introduced the amendment just a few months before a predicted Republican landslide in November, which will give control of Congress back to the GOP. The Daily Caller reported this week that Republican lawmakers are flooding the Biden administration with hundreds of preservation notices asking that relevant documents be preserved. And what about Ray Epps, the only man caught repeatedly on cell phone camera footage to encourage Trump supporters to go into the Capitol? Well, he was in the Marine Corps. That's all we now know. Could this explain why, despite Trump authorizing use of the National Guard, no local official went ahead and requested its use?
If Schiff's amendment passes the Senate, then no operation run by Democrats could be scrutinized by a coming Republican Congress, even with a large majority in both houses. Fortunately, passage in the Senate is very unlikely. Schiff had to know that, so this is a very desperate move on his part, one that only rings alarm bells in all the right places for those seeking justice for the January 6th violence. It could also open many other hidden scandals in a super scandal riddled administration. I'm still reporting from just outside the citadel of world freedom. Good day.